He pulled behind me because he seen two young black people driving. That's what it was. No stoplights on the street nowhere. I stopped at all three stop signs. We so good, y'all, man. At? We just going. I'm recording every yeah, time we get stopped. Yeah, converted. Well, as this well is regional, whatever so. it's called. He was way over there. We good so far, but. So what kind of stoplight? It ain't no stoplight. We stop ain't run no stop sign, though. It ain't no stoplight. I definitely light. know that. No, it can't be so much, man. No, we got Facebook Live, cuz. Yo. Yeah, we ain't gonna do Facebook Live because that's a soft officer safety issue. Man, get off my phone, man. Look at your boy. Look at your boy. Facebook Live? Yeah. We're not gonna have, okay? Because that lets everybody y'all follow on Facebook that we're out here. Yeah. There might be just one of me next time, yeah. okay? Let's everybody know where y'all are at. We're not gonna have that. If you wanna right. record, that is just fine. We record okay. too. So in the future, if you want a Facebook Live, your mm -hmm. phone's going to be taken from you. How? Is that a law? And if you don't want to give up your phone, you'll go to jail. Is that a law? Most people understand and accept that citizens have a constitutional right to record video of their interactions with police officers in general. Law enforcement has fought that every step of the way, of course. But is there a right to live stream encounters with police officers? More specifically, does a passenger of a vehicle detained at a traffic stop have a constitutional right to live stream that encounter from his cell phone. Anytime you hear the words officer safety from law enforcement or their lawyers or from the judiciary for that matter, that's a key word, an excuse to steal your freedom. Law enforcement is once again using the officer safety excuse to restrict our rights. What do they hate the most? That's right, being on video. What does citizens who interact with police officers need the most? video of that interaction. What's the problem with a regular recording that's not live streamed? Just like a wildlife game camera that catches a trespasser or thief, it only has value if the trespasser or thief doesn't confiscate it or destroy the footage. And what's to stop police officers from just seizing the phone and destroying it or deleting the footage? Not a whole lot. However, live streaming is an entirely different matter. Live stream video removes the ability of dishonest cops to destroy evidence and to conceal their misconduct. That's a good thing for us, but not surprisingly, they don't like that. So, they found a way around it. Officer safety. Okay. Sheriff's office. You got your ID on you? No, you can run my license, though. You got your ID number? No, no I'll give you my name. Juan Keys to stay. 10-4. Pulled right out in front of that other officer, too, man. He had a stop sign, didn't he? Dijon Sharp was a passenger in a car stopped for a traffic violation in Winterville, North Carolina on October 9, 2018. WPD officer Meyer Helms and William Ellis performed the stop. Sharp began live streaming the encounter with Facebook Live. At the beginning of the stop, while the driver and Mr. Sharp waited for the officers to approach the vehicle, the driver called a third party on his cell phone in order to have a witness as to what was happening. Meanwhile, Sharp began live streaming what was happening on his Facebook account using his phone. The live stream shows that during the stop, the driver continued his conversation with the third party on his cell phone during the entire course of this stop, including while speaking with the police officers. Stop sign, seatbelt. Man, we ain't got it. We clean. I got good driver license. It's the same thing they did last time. All hey, you got an ID me. on you? <laughs> no, all right, man, man, I'm about tired of this mess, man. It's the same thing they did last time. And they act like they didn't do nothing to us when, they, when we had to go to court behind Nah. Them. It's the same What's thing. Up? Nah. Okay. What's your name? For what? He should have ran my life to see who was good with. and let us go. I'm good. Okay. All right. So I didn't have a seat, but on um, and all this, he should have ran. The footage shows the interaction between Mr. Sharp the passenger, and Officer Helms. The video shows Officer Helms asking for Mr. Sharp's identification and then returning to the police vehicle. What officer? I thought I saw a stop sign right there. There's a stop sign right there. Yeah, What's your name? Juan Keesa Staten, J-U-A-N-K-E-S-T-A-S-T-A-T-E-N. Juan Keesa Staten. Okay. Yeah, what's your name? During this time, the driver continued his conversation with the third party over the cell phone, explaining that police had been begun following the vehicle for some time before initiating the traffic stop. I'm in Winterville. 54, I'm gonna clear up. I guess the police officer running my license. He expressed concern 
that he had been racially profiled. Oh no, he's not. didn't have seatbelt on the side. We got the tires in the car. We just came from Walmart, going to put the tires on the car. We went through. I went through your direction of Winterville instead of going the highway. And one of them was following me the whole while when I passed y'all house. The same thing again, right? <laughs> I said the same thing, man. As the driver was talking to the third party on his phone, Sharp talks into his phone, reassuring his viewers on Facebook Live that he was fine, advocating for his practice of recording interactions with law enforcement. We so good, y'all, man. Here? We just going, I'm recording every yeah, time we get stopped. Yeah, well, as well as regional, should, whatever so. it's called. He was way over there. We good so far, but. So what kind of stop light? It ain't no we stop, ain't no stop sign, though. It ain't no stop light. I definitely light. know that. According to the lawsuit he would subsequently file, Sharp began recording these sorts of things because he had been the victim of a brutal beating at the hands of police officers in a nearby town of Greenville 10 months earlier during a traffic stop. That experience prompted him to ensure that any future interactions he had with law enforcement would be recorded for his own protection. After emerging from the police vehicle, Officer Helms is seen on the video approaching the car window. He says, what have we got, Facebook Live, cuz? As soon as Mr. Sharp responds affirmatively, Officer Helms abruptly thrusts his arm through the passenger window and attempts to seize Mr. Sharp's cell phone. During this altercation, Officer Helms tells Sharp, we ain't gonna do Facebook Live because that's an officer safety issue. No, it can't be so much, man. No, we got Facebook Live, cuz. Yup. Yeah, we ain't gonna do Facebook Live because that's an officer safety issue. Man, get off my phone, man. Look at your boy, look at your boy. Oh, I'm saying, why are you grabbing on him, though, man? Cause he got his phone. You can't be grabbing on him, though. Look at me. You got three citations. Okay. Where wear your seatbelt. Okay. Fair you to you at the stop sign back okay. there. Okay. And you got to you to carry your driver's license. Okay, that's cool. All three of those citations, you can go online right there. I will. I, I know exactly how it works. Thank you, man. Yeah. Any for no, I'm good. Shortly afterwards, following the issuance of citations to the driver, Officer Ellis states, Facebook Live, we're not going to have that, okay? Because that lets everybody y'all follow on Facebook that we're at here. He says that recording is fine, but if you're live, your phone is going to be taken. Otherwise, you're going to jail. Okay, in the future, guys, this Facebook Live stuff, if you're Hey, look, man. Listen not not y'all, but boy, we had some shit going okay. with Green before these, man. Okay. Well, you got some shit going on with you, too. <laughs> I don't know why you, you grabbing me. I don't know why you <laughs> grabbing me. <laughs> Your man's just grabbing me. You seen him grab my my, my, my seat belt, grab on me and everything. P. Helms. Hey, I'm talking to you. No, he talking to the other dude. No, you talking to him. I'm talking to you. Okay, bet. Facebook Live? Yeah. We're not gonna have, okay? Because that lets everybody y'all follow on Facebook that we're out here. Yeah. There might be just one of me next time, yeah. okay? Let's everybody know where y'all are at. We're not gonna have that. If you wanna right. record, that is just fine. We record okay. too. So in the future, if you want a Facebook Live, your mm -hmm. phone's gonna be taken from you. How, is that a law? And if you don't wanna give up your phone, you'll go to jail. Is that a law? That's an officer you know, safety. The last issue, situation RDO. we had, the officer that's not a law. beat a guy up and then didn't okay. have his body cam on. Like I said, what did that okay. happen, man? I don't trust yeah, no like cops. I, said, I, I understand that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I had that happen to me, I'd probably yeah. be in the same situation. Yeah, man. But to let you know, you can record on you your phone. You got to Facebook for not going to happen. Okay, that's You understand, cool. passenger? All if right. I see I got that you. again, you ain't going to have that, all right? Um, Wait, let me put my seatbelt on. Yeah, come on. In the end, the phone was not seized, there was no citation or arrest pertaining to the live streaming. However, the threat was made that next time the phone would be seized and an arrest would be made if the phone was not forfeited. In Mr. Sharp's video, look how the officer is standing there watching Sharp and the driver treating them like they're up to no good. Yet the reason for the stop was supposedly a basic traffic violation. The officer asks for Sharp's ID because he likes to know who he's out with, he says. Is it any wonder that police officers get the reputation that they have? Based on the incident, as well as the threat to stop live streaming in the future, under penalty of arrest, Sharp sued the officers and the town of Winterville under Section 1983 for violation of the First Amendment. The district court dismissed the claims against the individual officers on qualified immunity grounds, holding that it was not clearly established in October of 2018 that a passenger in a stopped vehicle had a constitutional right to record and live broadcast the interaction. Additionally, the court held that live streaming by a vehicle passenger poses a, quote, unique threat to officer safety that mere recording does not and is therefore not clearly protected under the First Amendment. 
Eleven months later, the district court dismissed the claim against the town of Winterville on the grounds that Mr. Sharp had no constitutional right at all to live broadcast. Mr. Sharp appealed to the Fourth Circuit. It drew significant attention from civil liberties groups and press advocates. Seven amicus briefs were filed in support of his claims. Oral arguments were held last month, which involved a heated discussion between one of the federal judges on the panel and the lawyer who was representing Mr. Sharp. During the oral arguments, the federal judge seemed highly concerned about the rights of police officers, as opposed to the rights of an innocent citizen being detained as a passenger in a traffic stop. Listen for yourself. All right, the first case uh, we call is Sharp versus Winterville Police Department, and uh, Mr. Tutt, I think it's you first. May it please the court. This case raises questions that strike at the very heart of the First Amendment's most important protections. The right to film police officers and the discharge of their duties in public, only, subject only to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions, is a clearly established First Amendment right. Can I ask you this? This is a sort of a preliminary question, uh, whether that's relevant at all. The issue we have in this case is what may the police do to persons that are subject to a Terry stop or a traffic stop or an arrest. In other words, when they're in the police control, uh, what may the police do? My own take on this is that this is a traffic stop. Uh, and during a traffic stop, uh, there are a bunch of incidents that the Supreme Court has recognized, uh, uh, the first of which is both the driver and the passenger are subject to the stop. And they both have about the same rights. And the police officers have about the same rights with respect to them. For instance, you can tell the guy to step out, sit on the curb. You can, if a statute says you can require him to answer his name, you can require a bunch of stuff. You can probably, if he has an open gun, you can probably say, I'm just for the purpose of the stop, let's remove the gun. Uh, if you're worried about it, you can frisk. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of incidents under a traffic stop. And in this case, the officer says, we're not going to have live broadcasting. He says, you can film it. Uh, but we're not going to have live broadcasting during the stop. I think the question you ought to be addressing is uh, what rights do the officer have during the course of a traffic stop? Your Honor, the officer doesn't have, I want to make this clear, does ha has no interest in privacy with respect to a traffic stop that happens on a public street. His, his, argument for, his argument for suppressing telecommunications uh, he even said you could photograph, but he said the telecommunications is the worry about interfering with the stop, interfering with questioning, interfer a safety, uh, uh, somebody calling a gang around the uh, uh, thing. Uh, all of these things are concerns uh, that the officer might have if the people he's stopping are telecommunicating during the stop. What rights does an officer have to maintain control of the circumstances? That's what the Supreme Court is uh, uh, indicated the officer has a right to do uh, during a traffic stop. And your argument is the officer may not stop broadcasting during a traffic stop uh, because uh, that infringes on a First Amendment right. As you can see, unfortunately, this case appears to be going backwards. Instead of holding the government accountable for violating the First Amendment, the court appears to be positioning itself to do just the opposite, to create rights for police officers forgot which amendment to the Bill of Rights that one is. The Fourth Amendment grants no rights to officers. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Its purpose is to guarantee individual rights against the power of the government, not to government. This flies in the face of actual Fourth Amendment law. They're using amorphous and general concerns over officer safety that are not particular to the individual they're seeking to restrict. In other words, the officers here and those advocating for them to do so want the officers to have the power to stop them from live streaming based only on obscure general concerns over officer safety. Theoretically, if some bad guy was watching the live stream, he could find the location while the stop is in progress and theoretically harm the officers or cause some other safety issue. They're using blanket reasons. And again, that flies in the face of existing Fourth Amendment law, which requires particularity to the individual for things like frisks and searches. The fact is, freedom is scary. 
they need to deal with it or get another job. We cannot and must not appease that fear. For one thing, I don't believe it's genuine. It's an excuse to stop people from live streaming because they don't like live streaming. I just want you to be aware of this issue. This case is a sort of test case on this. A strategy that I believe that we'll see more of. But you can counter it in a couple of ways. Police officers don't necessarily have to know whether you're just recording or whether you're live streaming. They may start asking though. Also, there's going to be a difference between your basic pedestrian live streaming and the occupant of a traffic stop live streaming. If you're the occupant of a traffic stop, don't give them any ammunition with which to claim that you're interfering with the stop or causing some sort of safety issue. Just film, maybe hands off or using a live streaming dash cam. If you're a pedestrian, do everything you can to keep your distance, not interfere, but also be able to capture what you're entitled to capture under the First Amendment. Let me know in the comments if you start hearing about this. I guarantee you there's a memo going around law enforcement agencies on this particular case. If this starts coming up more, I'd like to hear about it. Also, make sure to subscribe if you're interested in this topic because there will definitely be an update on this one when the opinion is released. And don't get your hopes up based on what we heard during the oral arguments. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.